Okay. All right. So welcome to our team call. I don't even know what it is. It's Sunday, January 16th. Uh, really excited to share this with you ladies. Um, so like I said, I've been listening to Tony Robbins lately and um, he hasn't really been like a choice of mine in the past, but he has some really, really great content. So um, there's this one and Alicia, maybe you have already heard this, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It's about creating an, um, an extraordinary psychology on his, like, um, his app or whatever. I don't know if you have, but anyway, I thought it was just so good. And I think that it can really relate to coaching and just every, I mean, all aspects of life. Um, so it's kind of like all over the place, but I'm just going to go through my notes and hopefully you guys can get something from it. Um, so he, so he started off with, um, are you fulfilled or are you stressed in your life? And stress comes from fear. Like it's, it's when you think about stress, like the underlying reason of why you're stressed about something is usually because you're fearful of something. Um, so he says stress comes from making things more important than what they really are. So majoring in minor things, everything in your life is a reflection of what you decided to focus on and how you look at situations and decisions shape everything in your life. Like up to now, all of your decisions, everything you focus on has shaped the life that you have right now. Um, so if you want love, if you want money, if you want fun, fulfillment, happiness, connection, like all those things that we want, um, it comes when you master your emotions. Um, so let's just say like, for example, in this business, yes, we must work. We must do the tracker. We must like do all of those things. But if our mindset and the, the beliefs and the emotions around all of that isn't serving us, it doesn't matter. Like we can do the tracker, but it's not going to be as effective as if we have, if we're able to manage our emotions and change our mindset around it. Like if there's certain emotions or feelings that you have around certain, let's just say the tracker, like something on the tracker that, you know, makes you feel scared or makes you feel whatever it is, some kind of negative emotion. Um, and you're still doing it anyway, you're not going to be as effective as if you learn to like manage your emotions and change your mindset around that. Um, which is something that Danielle and I were just talking about. I think we all go through that. Um, so he said, um, that we need to understand that we all get our musts in life. Um, and we never get our shoulds. So whatever we must have in life, whatever we think we must have, we get, um, whatever we think we should have, like, maybe we get it. Maybe we don't, you know? Um, so like I should do my tracker. I should follow my nutrition. I should do my morning routine. Like a lot of times those are just things that we should do and we don't actually make it a priority. Right. Um, so <clears throat> he said, what we believe is a must will happen. Um, so for example, like what we feel like we must earn is what we're earning and not a penny more is what he said. And I was like, yeah, that's so crazy. Um, so like, I ask you, you know, what are your musts for coaching? Um, what are your musts and what are your shoulds? And kind of just like thinking about those things and like why, and just, um, you know, just, yeah, like just think about that and, uh, kind of dive into that a little bit more. We're going to do a little activity after, but, um, so he said, if you want to live your best life, you have to get over your fears and you have to tell yourself the truth, like the truth about whatever, like, since this is a business call, you know, maybe why you're not um, showing up on social media or why you're not doing your tracker or like, what are these things? Like, what are the beliefs that you're telling yourself? And what does this like mean to you? What are you making it mean? Um, 
he was saying that we need to step away from society and culture um, each day and tell that the, the culture that tells us to settle, um, to not have hope, to not protect ourselves, um, we need to step away from that every single day and, um, you know, don't buy into, oh, wait, hold on. Um, yeah, don't buy into it because then you'll live a life of no passion, no drive, no meaning. Like that's, that's how most of us live is just kind of like a mediocre life, right? Um, so we have to decide that our mind, our body, our emotions, our career, our relationships, our family, um, like we're going to, we're going to go after the things that we desire and it might not look perfect. That journey might not look perfect, but it will be extraordinary. What is that noise? Um, he says our culture settles and, um, that we, like, we cannot be that we have to rise up and be different. Um, and so he said, how, um, how do we do this? So basically it comes from realizing the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of your emotions on a daily basis. Um, so it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Like, it doesn't matter how much money you have, um, how great your relationship is, how, you know, if you have abs or how like happy you are with your body or Maybe you went for a goal and you achieve that like physical goal, but if you don't have your emotions managed, it, it, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, if you live in negative emotions, your life will feel worthless. If you live in gratitude and you cultivate passion, excitement, drive, appreciation, grace, humility, um, again, your circum, like your circumstances, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are is basically what he's saying. It's what you make it mean and what you decide to focus on. Um, um, what? <laughs> She's like begging me for something. Um, he said, what is wrong is always available. And so is what is right. Um, we have to uh, consciously resist the natural forces. Problems are a sign of life and it's just how you see them. Like we're, no matter, no matter what, as long as we're living, we're always going to have problems. There's always problems. That's just the way life is, but it depends on how you look at it. Like what you focus on. Um, so he said, something that we must do every day is set up rituals. And another word for rituals is like habits. So we all know this one, gratitude, you know, how much time are you spending in gratitude every day? Um, you cannot be in fear and gratitude at the same time. You cannot be grateful for something and be fearful at the same time, which I was like, oh yeah, that's like, that's true. So um, gratitude. And then we must have a vision. We must have something that we're excited about that we're creating, um, something that we're moving towards and coaching for me is always something that I'm excited. About. I mean, not always, I have to create my own excitement, but like, I think that coaching is like that vehicle that we can use to always have something that we're creating, like we're inventing things, we're excited, we're, we have a vision for where we're going and, and why we're here. Um, and he said that doing that, so like gratitude, vision, and then, oh, and then the last one was move your body. So what we do every day is like, you know, working out and moving our body. Are you serious? Sit. Um, he said, doing those things every single day um, that is how you start to gain momentum. So I wanted to do this little activity, um, that he also did with us. And it's writing down all of your emotions that you have in one day, just like on a regular day, the emotions that you feel, not something that you feel like every now and then, but this is something that you feel every day. So like, um, write on a piece of paper, like the good and then the painful, um, and so I don't know, do you want me to give you guys a couple minutes just to write down like a couple, um, 
of emotions that you feel. Okay. Okay, should I keep going? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so once you have those written down, it kind of shows you where you're living, but it also shows you like the things that you care about, the things that you're passionate about as well. Um, and he said that you can change your feelings in an instant um, by doing three things or, or, um, having these three things in place. So the first one is your physical body. So when you feel, okay. So like, are you like, are you slumped over? Are your eyes down? Are you breathing shallow? Is your head down or are, are your shoulders back? Are you sitting up? Are you smiling from ear to ear? So like, if you think about like, when you smile, like I was even doing this when he was talking, like I was smiling like ear to ear and it was literally impossible for me to be in a bad mood because you're just like, I don't know. I don't know why that is, but, <laughs> um, so that's the first one. And then whatever you focus on is what you're going to feel. So, um, I don't know, like, let's say for example, like in this business, you know, is there something that's making you feel like a failure? Like, so let's just take, I'll just use me, for example. Like I used to think, okay, if I don't hit success club, um, like I'm a failure, like I, I'm a complete failure. Well, that's not serving me. Like that mindset is not serving me because then I'm going to be in fear. Like all month, I'm going to be in fear. Like, you know, if I don't hit success club, like I suck and I, you know, I hate myself and whatever. Right. But instead focusing on like my success, like I, um, like if I show up every day and I do that tracker and I put my all into every single day, as much as I can, like, that's what makes me successful. What happens at the end of the month, like yeah, we all want to hit success club, but if, if it's making you feel like you don't like if, if it's paralyzing you and it's making you feel like you don't even want to show up and do something that you actually love, like you've got to change something, a belief to make it serve you. Right. Um, yeah. What is success? Yeah. What is hitting success club actually mean? Yeah. And I had to really change that. And even rank, like, yeah, I'm all for it. Like I've got big goals for rank. I've got big goals for success club. But at the end of the day, like if you're beating yourself up every single month, when you're not reaching your goals, like that's not serving you. And that's not going to help you to, to be here to help other people, which is what we're here to do. Right. So, um, that was number two is what you focus on. And then number three is your language pattern. So um, the questions that you ask yourself, the phrases that you say. Um, so he called it incantation. So these phrases that you tell yourself, they will literally hypnotize you. Um, and what we feel, again, is what we focus on. Um, and what we say to ourselves is like, if we're saying that over and over, whatever it is we're saying to ourselves, we're believing that. 
like a hundred percent, we believe that. So if it's not serving you, like we have to be more self-aware and figure out, you know, okay, I guess that's where affirmations come in, right? Like changing your, um, your beliefs and like what you're really telling yourself. Um, so what else? Oh yeah. And then like with your physical body. So like the, when I was saying like, are you slumped over? Are your eyes down? So the, the things that you wrote down, like when you feel good, those good emotions, you're probably like up and you're probably smiling and you're all those things. But when those, when you feel those painful emotions, you know, you're probably down, you're sad. You're, you're not, your face is just like, your eyes are down, your, your head's down. Right. So being aware of those things as well. Um, and what else? Um, I think that's kind of it. Hold on. And I mean, okay. Another thing like I was, I wrote down too, was, um, like changing your patterns and your rituals around the business. So, you know, having more fun with it, like how can you create more fun with, um, the daily activities that you're doing, um, what are, again, like, what are you making the things on your tracker mean? What are you making the nose mean? What are you making the crickets, the people that don't respond to you? Like, what are you making that mean? Um, because we have the choice to change that. We have the choice to make it whatever we want to make it. Um, I think in the beginning of coaching for me, a no was, um, it was very hard. Like I took it personally. Now over time, I, it's like a no to me means not right now, because after five years, there's people that are joining me that I invited in my first year. So it literally, it's like, you make it mean whatever you want to, and you have that choice, right? You, you decide that. Um, and I think that's it. I mean, I, I don't really know what to say about like taking action because I feel like we know what we have to do. We have a tracker to follow. It's the mindset. Like, I think the mindset is the most important thing. If we have that down, I think the tracker is like, like, you know, I don't know for me anyway, maybe, I don't know. I've been doing so much of this right now in his like 30 day personal power course. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there are a couple of things I wanted to say to you guys, but bear with me. <laughs> okay. So the one thing that I did want to say is that he's talking about like really heavily focusing on changing your state, like being able to manage your state, you know, being able to raise your own energy, being able to lift yourself up, you know, because, you know, like Steph was saying, when we're up, when we're high, we're, our body usually looks completely different. You know, we're like tall, we're happier. Our shoulders are back. Our head is up. We've got a big smile on our face. Our energy just speaks literally to people. you know, our energy speaks like I'm here, I'm happy, like welcoming, like welcoming energy. Whereas, you know, when we're down, it feels totally different. Um, shoulder slumps, low energy. We're almost creating more low energy for ourselves when we feed into that kind of thing, you know? Um, so something that he said about controlling your physiology, which really helped me. And I literally did this at the resort and I looked like a crazy person and I made so many people around me laugh so hard and it was like contagious. Um, he was saying like, get some power moves for yourself, like do something, find something for yourself that feels very natural in your body to pump yourself up. So, you know, he had us doing a couple of things where he was like, okay, like put your hands like this, put your hands together. You guys do this too. Like put your hands together like this and come out and in as fast as you can. And then come out and in. And it makes you like up your energy, you know, like that alone just makes you up your energy. What did that take? 10 seconds? What, five yeah. seconds? So I know it seems nuts, like it feels crazy and it looks crazy, but it's something that you can do like in your own space and it doesn't have to be that. So the way that you find what your power move is for you, because we all move differently. We all feel like differently within our bodies is to think of words and then stand up and let your body be that, like give yourself like 20 seconds to just let your body be that. So 
like get yourself in like a standing position, like a boxer stance or something and think the words like unstoppable, powerful, I'm unstoppable, powerful and keep walking around like I'm unstoppable, powerful. And like, how would you, what would your body language be saying if you felt powerful, if you felt like fucking Oprah, you know, if you felt like freaking Beyonce, you'd be strutting around that room, maybe like, hey, like hands in the air, like you would be you would be up, you know? So it takes practice. This is like felt very weird to me. And I definitely wasn't like Oprahing at the pool, but like, I definitely felt like higher energy and it helped. And like, even just falling back on the things that we know, you know, help us be- feel more energy, like sitting tall and like plastering a smile on your face, like fake smiling turns into real smiling. And that's a thing. Like that's a legit thing. Um, stretch, like stretching your body overhead, making yourself big, like not shrinking, you know, making yourself bold and big and really taking up space in this world, you know, figure out how you can get yourself into your peak state and get you energized practice, like total practice, you know, but I want to give you guys too, just like a how to of what he was saying about, um, being able to have that like mental shift a little bit beyond affirmations. Cause he was saying, you know, we can use affirmations to, um, to like try to rewire our brains, but ultimately it kind of turns into like almost like white noise in the back of our heads sometimes if we're not really like connected to it. So a way to connect to things that really matter to us in terms of being able to focus our mind and manage our mindset is, well, first off, I wanna say like, and Steph already said this, but this is really worth repeating and like writing down, the quality of your life is determined by the state that you live in. The quality of your life is determined by the state that you are living in, period like end of story, the consistent state that you're living in and it go, it ebbs and flows, but that's the quality of our, of our lives. Um, he was saying that, he was saying that the way we evaluate things determines how we feel. And that's where our states come from. It's just based on the constant evaluations we're doing of what's happening in our life on a day-to-day basis. And all evaluations are, are questions that we're asking ourselves. And a lot of times we don't even realize we're asking these questions. They're subconscious, you know, they're just like, they're just, it's like, I don't know, you're husband asks you what you want for dinner for the 30th time. And you're just like, oh my God, why is he asking me this again? This is, why is this so annoying? Like, why can't we just figure? And you're not saying that out loud, but it's creating this feeling within you, you know? Um, so it's straight up just about asking different questions. And I'm just gonna give you guys a couple examples here because this really helped me to put myself in a better space. And he says, he says, your brain can come up with an answer to anything that you ask it. So the quality of the questions that your brain is asking really matters. If you're constantly like, why is this always happening to me? Why do I always feel like this? Like, how did this happen in my life? Well, then your brain is going to look for that answer. It's going to look for like, why is my life shit? <laughs> you know. Um, so other questions you can ask instead. And he had us write down five of these and ask this to ourselves every single day, like whether in a moment we could catch ourselves or straight off in the morning, but how did I get so lucky? How did I get so lucky in my life? Um, what can I learn from this? This next one, these next two, actually really, I need this because people annoy the fucking hell out of me a lot of the time. (laughs) And so this one was, what do I respect about this person? What is one thing that I respect about this person? Um, and then another thing that I use heavily with all the stuff going on with my back is what is actually funny about this situation that I haven't noticed. So, cause he says like, you know, down the road, we always look back and we say, we're going to look back at this and we're going to laugh. You know, why can't we do that now? Why can't we find the funny now and laugh now? You know, hilarious. You guys, I got injured on my birthday doing something I friggin' love. Like I was riding a horse, you know, that's a circle. I was in my paradise place. Like, and this happened. It, it's, it's freaking funny. You know, I was like laying on a hammock, looking at the ocean while I was <laughs> excruciating pain. So I don't know, finding better questions. Um, just a couple others. Okay. How can I grow from this? How can I expand from this? What can I learn from this so that I never have to experience this again? What could I do today that would make the day more fun than ever before? What can I do today that will create a breakthrough in my business? What can I do today to connect more with my spouse? I wonder what I'll see today that I haven't seen before. So quality of 
questions, you know, directing the computer that is your brain in a little bit of a better way. Okay, I don't know how I just managed to do that, but I'm going to shut up now. Love you guys so hard. Bye. <clears throat> Those are so good. Yeah, so good. Um, okay, does anybody have like questions or anything they want to add or? Just look with thank you. Oh, sorry. It's okay. I just wanted to say thank you because that was so good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. And I really connected to just the whole emotions thing. Um, I think like for me, I know I always talk about this procrastination, you know, is a big thing, but um, when you talked about emotions, it <clears throat> made me think of like, maybe it's a feeling of guilt, you know, that I have around that, that just stops me from getting stuff done that I have to check. But, but yeah, it was, I took a lot of notes. It was really good. Both of you guys is good. Thank you. You're welcome. Alicia, what were you going to say? I was just thinking, like, did you guys feel anything while we were talking that like, you were like, oh, like you had an aha moment or something, or like you felt very strongly about something? If not, it's okay. But I just want to like, give you guys a chance to have the floor. Cause I know it can help to like verbalize some stuff when you're like in the moment of working through some like stuff. Yeah. I think the, the whole, the must versus should thing, like, you know, I'm a rule follower. So I think like, I, I should be doing that but like even though I'm a rule follower I still like I'm like well, I should do more of that you know like it gives you kind of an out the should whereas like the must is more definitive and then like the procrastination thing like Erica was saying I just heard I've been listening to Mel Robbins not Tony Robbins but Mel Robbins <laughs> uh, I finally got on that bandwagon and she said um, procrastination like I always think like oh, I'm being lazy if I'm procrastinating and she said that that's not the case you're actually you're procrastinating because you know the stress of the thing that you're procrastinating on is like that's what it is it's like it's not that you're lazy it's that the thing that you're about to conquer or do is or try to do is stressful and what do we do as humans we avoid stress like that's our that's the whole point it's not that we're lazy we're just like that's how we're surviving kind of thing but like I don't know. I just, I keep coming back to that, that procrastination is not laziness. But like, why am I, why am I procrastinating? It's because I'm stressed. Why am I stressed about this? It's because this is what I should be doing. And this is what I should be doing. Cause I must like, it's like, I don't know. It's just like all this, like connecting of the dots for me. I don't know if that makes sense or if I froze because my internet is shit. So no, it makes, <laughs> it makes total sense. Like, and I think the longer you procrastinate, the more you don't want to do it. But I know when I've I'm not like, so I'm not a huge procrastinator, but I have procrastinated. And I know that when I went, I think the thoughts of what I feel like I need to do is what paralyzes me. Cause when I actually do it, yeah. it's not even like as bad as what I thought, like what I was making it in my head. Yeah. I think it's the overwhelm. It's the anticipation of the overwhelm and like, the yeah. Like, oh, I, have I read so much something time. that was like perfectionists are the worst procrastinators because they were not, they're not going to do it if it's not perfect, if it's not guaranteed to be perfect for them, you know, I procrastinate a lot. Um, but Krista too, the thing I was thinking about what you just said is that it's also like, we're feeling stressed, but like, what's the meaning behind what, are, what meaning are we putting towards it? You know, like, are we saying, oh, this is another thing I have to add to my plate? Or are we saying like, I really want to make a difference in somebody's life this month kind of thing. You know what I mean? So good. That being said, I've been really shitty about doing my tracker for obvious reasons. And yeah. I'm going to get back to you tomorrow. Actually, Steph, are you going to do start power hours again tomorrow? Like nine. Okay. I'm going to hop on with you in the morning and try to just get all or something. All or oh, something. It's been so, it's been so good just to, I mean, I feel like I'm so much more productive at six at that time, just to get like a bunch of stuff done. Yeah. I, and also, so you guys, we get, Steph has this like open power hour happening from nine to 10 uh, Eastern standard time. Um, 
like Monday through Friday. And this woman, Nisi gets on. Nisi is like 55 years old and she is a freaking ray of sunshine. Like I'm obsessed with Nisi. I'm obsessed with Nisi. And she's like no nonsense ray of sunshine. sunshine. So she's like, all right, what are we doing today, ladies? She's like, 20 invites, let's go. Reconnecting in 30 minutes. And we're like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and then she'll tell us a story about her like grandkid. And it's like the most heartwarming thing I've ever heard. Anyway, it's amazing. If you can possibly make them, you definitely should because she's awesome. She is so awesome. Okay, anyone else? Danielle. Um, <laughs> um, no, it's just, I needed this today. You know, we talked earlier and I don't want to get too emotional over it because I've been beating myself up pretty bad. Um, but yeah, I needed this today. I really did. The guilt and, you know, um, what Alicia said about the questions, you know, instead of saying why, are things like this happening? It's more of like, what can I learn? What can I do, you know, um, to make things more positive instead of continuously beating myself up for things that I haven't done or, you know, that I, I need to do, but I use that should mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of the need. So yeah, I just, I really needed this today. Cause it's just, it's, you know, the past few months have been a little rough. So getting back at it. Yes. Guys, can I share one thing with you before we hop off? Yeah. Another coach on our team posted this quote today and it like spoke so hard to me. She wrote, the key to expanding capacity is to both push beyond one's ordinary limits and to regularly seek recovery, which is when growth actually occurs. So it's like, not like an all day push. Like there's so many moments in a day, you know, there's like 24 hours in a day. We can rest for an hour and we can push for an hour. You know, we can, we can seek that like balance of like getting after it, doing what we got to do and just taking that time out for ourselves, you know, like, I don't know. It just, that quote spoke to me. So I just wanted to share. I think that's, yeah, that's good. I had to learn that. Like, I think resting is, just as important as the work, like you have to rest. And I didn't do that for, I just remember, I was telling Danielle this today, like back when I first started coaching, well, when I, when I thought like, okay, I really want to like, I've got like huge goals. Cause in the first couple of years, I really didn't, I didn't really, I was just doing the things. I really didn't have like huge, huge goals. Um, but to me, uh, working hard, meant working long hours. And I realized that when I was in Josh Coates's thing, like he was like, well, what is, what does that mean to you? Like, what does working hard mean? I'm like, well, working a lot, like working all the time. And he was like, well, why, why does it mean, like, why do you have to work all the time to work hard? Like, why don't you just be more intentional? Why don't you just be, you know, like when you are working, be super focused and super intentional. I was like, I never looked at it like that. And so I used to work, there was a period where like, I would work during the day because I've always, this has always been my only, since I've been doing Beachbody, this has been my only thing. So I'd work during the day and then like, I would take two hours at night and work and I would like leave my family and go and work. And now when I look back, I'm just like, no, like that is just, you do have to have balance. You do have to spend, and I learned that from Josh, like you got to work your, you got to work hard in your business, but you got to like, make sure every other aspect of your life is you're paying attention to those things as well. It's so, so important because your, your family's going to resent you. You're going to resent the business. You're not going to want to show up. Like it's, it's like, yeah. So now I just let myself like Nisi's always like, are you going to work on Saturday? I'm like, no, I don't do power hours on the weekend anymore. No, <laughs> but I work my butt off Monday to Friday. So anyway, anything else? I really like that. That's totally me. The working hard thing. Yeah. That's like a learned, that's a learned behavior though, too. Yes. <laughs> 
totally it like is that, you know like my parents they're always work physically working yeah you know so yeah I equate working hard with that and it yeah it could be intentional I like that yeah intentional and focused I think because you can show up and like be working but that doesn't necessarily mean you're working hard so yeah. Okay. Busy work, like scrolling your ass off on yeah on social media, which has been a hard lesson for me this week because I'm like everyone's annoying me, and when I'm just like getting my reels up and like doing my 20 new convos and not digging into the feed, my life is so much more peaceful. I'm yeah. like none of this like barrage of people shit is hitting me. I'm in and out of social, and that's it. Like goodbye, everybody else do your thing. I'm gonna do mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and that scrolling thing like when you're supposed to be working. I mean, that to me is super overwhelming. Like that takes so much out of me by the time, like if I've scrolled for 10 minutes, I don't want to work. Like, I'm like, no, I'm done. Me too. I'm like, I hate people. I don't want to talk. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't even want to reach out to anybody because you're like drained. (laughs) So boundaries, we have to set boundaries. That's a crazy thing about our job too, though, is that people are always like, well, I could never do what you do because you're always, you're on social media all the time. And I'm like, sister, I'm, when I'm really doing my job, I am on social media way less than I was when I was just aimlessly freaking fucking around on. (laughs) And honestly, when you're doing your job on social media, you're not scrolling, you're, you're doing your job. You're literally like sending messages, posting shit and getting off or engaging and getting off. I mean, that's what I think. You're trying to, yeah. (laughs) To practice. Yeah. But again, we're the masters of our own minds, you know, of our own states. If we can just keep fighting for that, you know, to get better about like not getting sucked into that shit and just doing what we got to do, you know, it's a practice, man. It's practice. It is. All right. Anything else? No. Can we do a picture? Yeah. A boom. (laughs) Wait, are we doing a picture or a boomerang? Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. I'm sorry. Um, I can make it a boom with a picture. Okay. All right, ready? One, two, three. It'll it'll boom it. It'll boom itself. All right. I'll send it to you guys. Okay. Thank you. You guys are doing a power hour tomorrow at nine? Yes. All right. I have off tomorrow, so I might be able to hop on. Okay, so it's on my link. Okay. Um, but I'll Alicia, post it. Chris, yeah. I'll post it in our message thread. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yay. Thanks for hopping on. Thank you. It was great. Bye. Feel better, Alicia?